This piece of energy is about to cause a major winter storm as it heads eastward across the United States this weekend and into next week with snowfall and severe weather expected from parts of Oklahoma and Texas all the way to the east coast. Details on everything you need to know right here in this video, so stick around. Thank you so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel or just haven't hit that button yet. It really helps support me here if you like the content. Um, this is Weather Bell Maps. Free trial to those in the description. Now let's play out what we've got going on. Of course, we have had some reported tornadoes going on. There have been storm chasers out in the field um, this evening over parts of the Midwest and into the Great Lakes, but primarily over northern Illinois as this low pressure system has brought some shower storms and as well as some wraparound snowfall there into parts of North Dakota and Minnesota. We've also got a new low down here into parts of the Four Corners region and bringing some snowfall there and that's going to be kind of what sets up our system into this early part of this weekend with some showers there you can see those stretching down here over parts of the tennessee valley southern ohio valley as we go towards our saturday morning simultaneously we'll also have a little bit of rainfall stretching back closer to the gulf coast and arklatex region that's going to really begin to pick up as we go through the day on saturday that's as a new low pressure system is going to begin supporting this as it moves into west texas also bringing some gustier winds and wraparound snowfall there into the four corners primarily there the high elevations of Arizona, New Mexico, and eastern Colorado. Um, you can see as we make our way though towards our midday on Sunday, that's when it looks like we'll see a snow band set up over the panhandle of Texas and northwestern parts of Oklahoma and into the panhandle there. Also watching a potential severe weather event that will break down a little bit more in detail there over parts of Texas, Louisiana, and into southern Mississippi. Notice how this low continues trekking off in a northeasterly track with the European model, and it is a pretty sharp, you know, angle there towards the northeast as that snowfall band looks like like it'll be tracking through parts of northern Oklahoma into Missouri, eventually towards central Illinois. This system, as we make our way towards our Monday morning, maybe some showers and storms worth watching down there closer to the Gulf Coast. Also watching that snowfall in eastern Kansas and Missouri as that polar jet dips down like so to help support that system. And you continue to notice this one solution bringing this on off towards the north and east. A narrow band of some snowfall that could impact parts of central um, Indiana into northern Ohio as the jet dips down. Um, but we'll see here, though, you see that blue line I just kind of showed the dip with. The next blue line's up there indicating the you know, cooler air with the polar jet stream are a little bit further north so it looks like we will be able to see this system tap into even cooler air and bring a pretty heavy burst of some wet snowfall here as it kind of makes its way on off in towards the north and east so as this enters parts of pennsylvania new york um, southern new england as well monday night and into our tuesday we could see a very heavy burst of snowfall with some moderately decent ratios as well over that region as it heads in that direction let's see how the gfs plays out the same thing because we want to look at those two main models right kind of compare them as we make our way through the middle of the day to back half of the day on our Sunday. This is as we go towards 3, 4 o'clock. Again, notice some snowfall back into the Texas um, panhandle as well as Oklahoma panhandle. The GFS kind of loses that snowfall for a minute as this low tries to kind of gather itself together there. But as we go, say Monday late in the day, we'll be watching the showers and storms through the south and east, just like I was talking about with the Euro. Um, also watching at least the northern end and snow. But the GFS doesn't really go bullish on this snowfall until it especially makes its way again on up here into parts of Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Although with the dip in the polar jet stream being just a little bit further south, it does bring the snowfall a little bit heavier on up there through the Ohio Valley and a little bit quicker to onset there. And then also notice this low is going to kind of head more directly east with its continued track. And that brings that snowfall, you know, over places like New York City, through parts of New Jersey, um, Philadelphia, all, some, all of these major areas getting impacted. And Boston would actually kind of be on the northern fringe of that system, whereas with the Euro solution, kind of a little bit more in the track of the heavier snowfall. So let's look at those two models and their snowfall tracks. Here's the Euro over the south central. Again, you can see decent totals through the Four Corners region, most elevations seeing at least some snowfall there. The Euro is showing the um, Texas, especially the northwest central part of Texas, so to speak, there, as well as southwest parts of Oklahoma. Totals a foot plus there. Some of these could make their way on up close to Oklahoma City or just north of town. Also notice some of those heavier totals there through south central parts of Illinois in that stripe, but at least two inches of snow stretching all the way on up there into parts of western Ohio with the Euro solution. As we take a look at the northeastern region, look at that heavy snowfall as that low would track pretty much right over Long Island. Again, this isn't an extremely strong low, but because it's tapping on into the polar jet stream and its energy there, some snowfall totals through north-central Pennsylvania, all the way on over there through Boston, another decent event for a place like Boston out of this one. Um, we could pick up, you know, maybe a foot of snowfall in a pretty decent fashion along that stripe I just showed you there. Um, so it's worth watching there with the Euro model. That's how it plays it out with this particular solution. 
Here's the GFS though. It's been a little bit more on the southern track with the storm because it has it instead of moving northeast, has it kind of trending a little bit more, you know, east and northeast. And you can see again, initially that heavy snowfall there, maybe in a small pocket, a little bit smaller there in the parts of the northern um, panhandle of Texas there as well as southwest Oklahoma. Maybe a little band there through south central parts of Missouri. That's the GFS. Remember though, the Euro doesn't have this, you know, have that band of little pink there into south central Missouri. It has it down there in the parts of south central Illinois. So there are those little details that we're still going to be picking out. Nothing is in certainty yet, except that we will probably have a pretty decent snowstorm. And look at this, another swath of some foot plus totals here, this time with the GFS. And again, it's a little bit further south, places like New York City, even just a little bit south of the city. All these areas I'm kind of putting those hash marks on right now. That's where we're looking at that foot plus to total possibility there out of the GFS. And this would include places like Philadelphia and on there through parts of central New Jersey. So we've looked at the two different sides and the two different models there for that um, winter weather side of this system. Now let's take a look at the severe weather outlook. This is what I was talking about in yesterday's video. Through parts of south central Texas, um, especially the Houston area and the areas just near Tyler, Texas, then on down just south of Shreveport, Louisiana, through places like Lake Charles um, and over to New Orleans as well, maybe far southwestern parts of Mississippi as well. We'll be watching a potential slight risk for severe weather as we're going to have a pretty potent trough digging on into this area with decent enough low-level jet stream energy um, for some spin-up tornadoes to also get in the mix along with some gusty winds and maybe some moderate hail as well. Again, you can kind of see the polar jet stream and our southern jet stream really fusing there in Texas as we make our way in towards the early part of this weekend, and that's why it stays rainy over the south until the system evolves. And as we go Sunday night into Monday, this trough really picks on up. This is a positively tilted trough because you can see here that we're not really seeing the, you know, the, the curl of this trough go almost back in the direction it was coming from. Nonetheless, though, what this means, though, as strong as those, you know, those tans, those grays, those white colors are indicating, there is a very strong positively tilted trough moving through. And as that kind of connects with that polar jet stream that's going to be trying to move on up towards the north, we will continue to watch that severe weather threat progress through at least parts of the Gulf Coast region of maybe Alabama, Georgia, the Florida Panhandle. So we'll kind of watch that there. Um, and then, of course, again, with the polar jet stream dipping down like so towards the end of this system, that's why we kind of get that renewed snowfall um, up there um, into parts of the northeastern United States. Now, let's look at that storm energy that the European model is showing for us here. We can get it hour by hour up to 90 hours out. So we're just kind of starting to get into that range here. As we go through Saturday night into Sunday here, early morning time frame of Sunday, we might see, we'll see what we can get Saturday night and into Sunday there through south central Texas. That could bring some severe weather there. Um, it would mainly be localized to Texas um, Saturday night and into Sunday if it can get going. Notice that we've got modest instability. You know, you need about 500 joules per kilogram of this Cape storm energy is what, you know, what it is here over this region. And I do think over parts of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Mississippi, we will continue to have that through Sunday night and into Monday. Um, and then we also notice a thin band of some modest instability continuing eastward. Um, you know, but again, at the highest instability closer to 1,000, 1,500 is going to be when the storm is further back on over towards the Arklatex. Now here's um, kind of what we look at with the forecast rainfall out of the Weather Prediction Center. This is, you know, directly from the National Weather Service and that Weather Prediction Center here. Those totals looking like so as we make our way all the way through Tuesday evening. So this is from all the rain we get, not just from this systems or from the not just from this system, but from the systems prior as well. Some of those totals from East Texas all the way and over through the Carolinas looking to be closer to an inch to three inches of rainfall. We'll watch the flooding potential, especially through the deep south out of this. Now what we're also watching is the cool air that's gonna kinda make its way on in behind this system, and it does look in the six to ten day range, like we'll be at least a little bit below average along the east coast here, warmer than average closer to the west coast cooler than average up there into Montana, and then another little warmer than average zone up there over the upper Midwest. So a little bit of a broken pattern here with no major anomalies at this point, but it does look like as we make our way beyond, the, you know, once the system moves on through, it will at least briefly bring in some pretty cool air, and you can see that developing here. Temperature anomalies of 5, 10, even 15 degrees below average surging in behind this low pressure system into parts of the Mid-South under that ridge that's over the upper Midwest by the time we make our way towards our Monday evening. That continues progressing eastward and we see some cooler than average air kind of lingering around eastern zones while this ridge stays over the upper Midwest into the middle of next week. This is Wednesday, February 14th. Cooler than average in the west, warmer than average in the upper Midwest, a little bit cooler than average in the east. That's kind of going to be the pattern as we head through next week, I think. 
But notice it does look like with these, you know, Euro ensembles that we're looking at right here, the EPS, we're pretty much noti noting that the cooler than average air, even as we had, you know, 5, 10, 15 days out, it looks like it's going to be lingering around in the east. Um, new bands of some polar jet streaks will move on in as well to kind of reinforce that at times. It's still uncertain how strong these will be and if those will bring any winter storms. But of course, I'll let you know if they do um, and how this pattern shapes on up. But it does look a little bit more favorable continuing down the line. So hopefully this brings you everything you need to know. If so, please hit that subscribe button. Weatherbell Maps free trial in the description. That's it for this video. Hope everybody stays safe out there and anybody impacted by those tornadoes today stays safe as well.